Let's see how we can enhance our renders in Affinity Photo a little bit. First thing, if you are on Windows, you might want to search for color filters. And here you can turn this on and check grayscale. The shortcut for turning this on and off is the Windows key, Ctrl and C, right? And this is really useful to check the contrast of your colors. So first thing I like to do is to add a curves to my project. So I'm going to turn on the filter and I'm going to start working on that. So here is a quick explanation on how the curves filter works. On the X axis, you have a dark um, light and on the Y axis, you have the same thing. So this dot here represents the darkest pixels of your renders. So if I were to take this and drag it up, I will increase the likeness of the darkest pixels because I am moving it towards uh, the light side on the Y axis, right? If I were to do the other thing, then all this section is going to become absolute black, uh, right? And same goes for this. If I were to take the light pixels, I can make them darker by moving it down here. Cool. So we can take maybe a spot here. And let's say we want a little bit of contrast. So we can take some dark pixels and make them a little bit darker by moving them down here, as you can see. And we want also the light pixels to be a little bit lighter. So we are basically creating an S curve like this. And this is a way to add contrast to our scene. You can also select the mid range and you can decide what you want to do with that. Maybe a little bit darker here. You can keep playing with this until you find something that you think looks nice. Uh, again, the black and white filter is very useful to check in, for checking this kind of stuff. All right, so let's say here, let's see what we can do. I think that looks good. All right. So we can disable the filter with the shortcut and this is before and after. So already we have quite a change as you can see. Next thing that I like to do is to add a little bit of noise to my rendering. For that you can go here to live filters, add noise and you can increase the intensity of this so you can see it. Right now it is uh, a part of the curve adjustment, so it's not doing much. We need to move it uh, above it. And you will see that it looks something like this. Uh, in my case, I want a uh, colorful noise, so I disable monochromatic. And that way I have a noise that looks like this. So I'm going to put the intensity down to 20 and now here is the important part and it is that I want the noise to show up only on the dark areas of my image and this is basically to simulate what a shitty camera will uh, take a picture like if you take a shitty camera and you take a picture you will have some noise in the dark areas of that photo and we want to simulate that in our renderings if we want to make them more realistic. For that, you can go to the add noise and you can come here to the settings and in underlying composition range, you can come here and drag this down. All right. And you will see now, maybe we go to a later part that you will have less noise showing on the light parts 
and more noise on the dark parts. Uh, maybe here is a good place so you can notice it. No noise, no noise on the dark parts, noise in the dark parts, and not in the light parts. And you can of course play with this however you want. In my case I want something more like this and maybe something more like so. Okay. Maybe we don't want it linear either. But that's basically how you can make something affect only a certain uh, uh, value range of your render. If you want to modify the amount of noise, you can always go to the opacity or to the noise filter itself. Okay. Uh, let's maybe make it 15. And of course, there is a bunch of stuff you can do. You can do a little bit of adjustments on the saturation if you want. Shift the hue a bit, the luminosity, whatever you want. Um, we can also add some depth of field. Um, I already have this on my default uh, render, but you can also add it here. One important thing to take into account is that if you increase the radius, you will see that it will also blur the edges. For that, you want to click Preserve Alpha. Okay. So that way you maybe want to focus something like this. You can squish this. And let's say you want to focus only on this part. You can decrease the radius a little bit. Something like this. And of course the order matters. Maybe you want the noise to be on top. So you don't blur the noise. Okay, and there we have a little bit of depth of field. Uh, let's see what else we can add. We can add a clarity, which is really good to uh, enhance the details uh, pretty easily of our renders. You should increase the strength and you will see a lot of detail coming in just like that. Especially in these parts, you will see it clearly. So if you want really strong renders, you can choose put a clarity there, uh, maybe below the noise, so it doesn't go crazy. Mm, but yeah, that's uh, maybe we can add this above. Um, so we can make a group of this, and we can compare the before and after. And as you can see, that is uh, quite a difference already. I am not too happy with the curves adjustment here. I think I actually it actually removes a little bit of the contrast. So we are going to work on that a bit. Let's see, maybe something like that. Um, I'm just going to straight up get rid of that because if you don't like it, remove it, right? And this is what I have. Cool. Let's see how it looks on the other renders. Here is uh, before and after. You have that really subtle effect of the noise and of course of the depth of field blur. Uh, let's see here. This makes quite a difference. Um, of course, you might want to change the uh, depth of field here. Maybe you want to focus more on this part, right? And in general, I will suggest that you check out the other different uh, filters that you have. If you want to posterize this, for example, for more artistic effect uh, or whatever um, you can you know modify all of this 
uh, just make sure to keep it like uh, non-destructive so you can always go back and you know uh, modify the values remove something if you don't like it and stuff like that um, one important thing is that you can add uh, if I can find it I think it's in live filters you can add a vignette I don't know how to pronounce it but this which is you know let's add it move it here there we go it is the classical effect that you can add the problem with this effect is that if you are going to add it to uh, let's say our station or Twitter or stuff like that you will clearly see some banding happening which is generally not something that I like a lot but you can see here uh, already on affinity by itself that you can see some bands here and this will be more clearly when it gets compressed and you upload it to our station for example so that's something that you must have in mind when you do this okay but that's most of the filters or basically all of the filters that I personally add in my renders in Affinity Photo as you can see here before and after and uh, you can keep playing with this and uh, you have a lot of filters to play with but yes that's basically uh, the workflow that I use I choose import all of my renders and make a group uh, for general uh, post-processing and then I save the images generally because you know uh, we added this noise to simulate like kind of like a bad quality camera that has some realism I like to save my uh, renders with the JPEG uh, format with some bad quality compression so it also adds a little bit of uh, bad quality to it so if we go here YouTube this is what our final rendering looks like and um, maybe I went too low quality with the export but you get the idea um, so yes, uh, this was the tutorial on how to add some post-processing on Affinity Photo. If you found it useful, please leave a like, subscribe and share it if you think someone else might find it useful. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.